We start this project as we started the 2D game tutorial project with Game1.cs, provided to us by XNA Game Studio, exactly the same as it was given to us in the 2D game tutorial. We'll interact with the same basic methods. We'll declare our variables at the top of the Game1 class, load our graphics in the load content method, update our objects in update, and draw them in the draw method. What's different about this project is how we define, move, and draw our objects. The third dimension makes for some more complicated math and logic, but it can also create an immersive, flexible world that can make for some compelling gameplay. The detailed text for this step explains all about the differences between 2D and 3D, and explains some of the new concepts we'll be exploring. If you'd like some background, click the More Details link for this step. If you don't want the detail now, don't worry, there's plenty you can learn along the way. To get acquainted with the 3D world, the best thing to do is just jump in and render a 3D object to the screen. It might as well be something useful to our game, too. The best choice would be the terrain we'll use as a backdrop. It doesn't need to move or do anything fancy, it just needs to sit there and be visible. Perfect choice for a beginning object to draw. First. Find the top of your Game 1 class. There, you'll find two variables already declared, a Graphics Device Manager and a Sprite Batch. Below the Sprite Batch line, add a new line, and then add these two lines. Model, Terrain Model. Vector 3, Terrain Position, equals Vector 3.0. The first line declares an instance of a class we haven't seen before, a model. A model is a class provided by the XNA framework that represents a 3D model, which is a collection of 3D meshes. You could think of a mesh as a representation of a 3D object, such as a car, a person, an animal, a weapon, any object you can think of. A mesh is like a 3D sculpture of that object. A model is a collection of these meshes that all have some logical connection. In the case of a car, there might be individual meshes for the tires, the roof, the steering wheel, and so on, but the whole car is a model. The terrain that we'll be loading is a single model made out of a single mesh, so it's a very simple case. We'll declare the model and, like the Texture 2D objects we used in the 2D game tutorial, We'll initialize them in the load content method a little later. The second line is also a new class, but similar to one you've used before, a vector 3. Like a vector 2, it's a handy way to store a set of coordinates, only this time it's a set of three coordinates instead of two. The third coordinate, the Z coordinate, defines depth, our new axis, the third dimension. The terrain's location is set to vector 3.0 which is a handy way of setting all three coordinates, x, y, and z, to zero. The coordinates 0, 0, 0 correspond to the exact center of our 3D world. Now, underneath those two lines, add a new line, and add the following four lines. Vector 3, camera position, equals new vector 3, 0.0f, 60.0f, 160.0f. Vector 3, camera look at, equals new vector 3, 0.0f, 50.0f, 0.0f. Matrix, camera projection matrix. Matrix, Camera, View Matrix. These four variables deal with the idea of a camera. What is a camera? Think of it as where your eye is in 3D space. There's no way to draw everything in 3D space onto a 2D screen like you're looking at now. You have to define a piece of that 3D scene to draw, and the camera defines what that is based on the position and orientation of the camera 
and a few other factors like field of view. The first two lines identify where the camera is in the world, and here we have our first glimpse of non-zero 3D coordinates. While it's true that the first coordinate, x, is zero, which means that the camera is not shifted to the left or right of the center of the world, the other two, y and z, are definitely not zero. What are y and z? In 3D space, y corresponds to up and down, height. A positive 60 y value means that the camera is above the center of the world by 60 units. The z value corresponds to depth, basically toward or away from your screen. XNA Game Studio uses a right-handed coordinate system. In that kind of system, a positive z value is toward the screen, negative is away. So we have the camera 160 units farther toward the user than the center of the world. To recap, the camera is slightly up and slightly toward you. The next line defines something called camera look at. The first line was position. This line is orientation. What's the camera looking at? It's looking at a point that is just 50 units above the center of the world. Not back or forward, not left or right, just a point 50 units above the center. The second two lines are our first examples of matrices. A matrix is a mathematical construct that defines a three-dimensional transformation. We apply matrices to vector threes to change them in predictable, often reversible ways. For instance, we may use matrices to rotate a 3D point, or slide it around, or make a set of points bigger or smaller. The matrix class is a very useful class that represents a mathematical matrix, but with a whole bunch of helper methods that can construct useful matrices or change them in certain ways. We'll be using this class a lot. For an understanding of some of the matrices you'll be using, click More Details for this step. For now, Think of these two matrices as representing how we'll use the camera to draw the 3D scene. We haven't initialized them yet. We're going to do that right now. 